I think we're live. Hey, hey, everybody. This is Pia Larson with Fingerprint Marketing coming to you with our lead developer, Eric Novak. Hello, uh, guys. <laughs> welcome to the uh, website SmackDown. So today, let me explain a little bit about what we're doing. We used to do this a long time ago, and it was so much fun. So uh, we share a website that we've been given permission to look at, and we'll do a deep dive uh, review of the site. We're going to look at things like design, um, SEO. We're going to look at the copy, the text on the pages, kind of how the website takes a perspective viewer through the client journey. Um, and all sorts of good stuff. We do have the chat open if you have any questions or want to make any comments. Um, we try to be very gentle with the with the uh, businesses because we know it's hard to be a small business and do everything. But um, we found that with these uh, reviews and 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 going through this exercise, it, it really helps other businesses make some small tweaks uh, to improve right. their their online presence. So. Why don't we uh, just dive into it? I'm. This is the first time I have been live streaming uh, since COVID. So <laughs> this is the first time I've live streamed with another person. So oh. I'm very excited. But yeah, this is like when you're looking at a website and you're kind of dissecting it. There's so many different things that you can look at. Um, oh. So I'm hoping you know takeaway we get a couple small things that they can work on. Um, you know, so they can improve their web presence and, uh, you know, keep bringing in clients that they can make happy. Yeah. And just a note, if anyone is interested in submitting their website or someone that they know, um, we ask that you just run it by them first because we want to get permission. Um, again, we're very gentle. We don't like tear you apart. We're just giving you some helpful tips on how to improve your web presence and online presence. So I'm going to share you my know how You know how restrained I have to be for that to happen to be gentle. <laughs> my, my inner web developer just kicks in. And I'm like, oh, I've got to tear it apart. No, I know. I, 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 I can do it. <laughs> I tell people it's kind of like when if you're an interior designer and you walk into a room and there's things that you just cannot not see. Like you're like, okay, this needs to go over here. This needs to change. So it's kind of fun. We're um, not the uh, Parisian design mafia over here, you know. <laughs> oh, darling, your outfit is horrible. Get out of here. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'm going to share my screen. Oop, that's not good. Ooh, scary. That was kind of spooky. Yeah. Yeah. So that was our, that was our Halloween effect that we did on the purpose. <laughs> that, was, that was intentional. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so today we're going to talk about Moser Wealth Advisors, and I'm going to give a shout out to Michelle. She is my contact there, and she, um, her and I have been talking back and forth about trying to uh, convince the partners to redesign their website. So I told her I was going to do this. They're totally fine with it. Um, I think the site was uh, last designed in 2010. Wow. So t that's 10 years. Yeah. So Eric, in your opinion, like what determines how often you have to redesign or refresh um, a website in your opinion in this day and age? Yeah. Well, if we look at also mobile coding, I think that's a very indicative of when the site needs to be updated. Um, mobile coding, you know, didn't become really a major thing until around 2014, 2015. And that's when it really started to become the impetus for driving a website. So if you have a website that's older than 2015, there's a lot of chances that there's a lot of stuff that's not mobile compatible. And that can be a major issue. So I would say if, if you're looking at keeping your website current every two to three years is, is pretty important to do uh, a refresh or at least uh, look at the trends and make sure that it's working correctly. Yeah, so that's a good place to start is, is your website mobile, not just friendly, but ready? And there's two reasons why it's super important. First of all, um, Google, when they are determining whether they serve your website up in a search result, meaning if someone's going to be looking for, say, Wealth Advisors in Bellevue, and you don't pass their test, they won't um, provide that on page one of searches. So you won't even show up. But also, it's the, the prospect's experience. Like, we're 62% yeah. of us normally see the brand first time on our phones. And if it's really aggravating, we're going to have a bad brand experience. So let's see what that experience would be um, if we're on the phone. So 
Yeah, you can't really tell here, but. Well, I've got it up on my phone right here. And what I noticed right away is that it's actually a child theme or a plugin that's specifically developed to show the site mobile friendly. And that's okay. fine, but there's some issues with that, um, which are that the entire user experience is being lost in this mobile friendly coding. Um, and then they're, you know, they've got a button to go to the to the full site. But um, basically what you're losing here is all of your pictures, all of the context, and it's, it looks kind of like a telephone book, and that's not yeah. the experience you want users to have on yeah, your website. So with, a, so with a refreshed website, um, this is something that we tackle right away. Um, and then overall, you know, this is not the first time I've been to this site, but why don't you give us some just overall First impressions, Eric. Yeah. It's the first funny. thing that I'm noticing is that um, the site is only taking up about maybe 60% of the screen. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a major issue because uh, everybody is used to a full screen experience at this point. They're really looking to be immersed in your website and they're looking to get that visual stimuli. Where are, where are things? What are the calls to action? Um, also, because it's so small and everything's kind of centered, um, there is no hierarchy of call to action on it. So I'm not really seeing any place that I would naturally go to figure, I might push play on the button for the video, but it's also tiny and it's in a rotator. Tell them about the rot rotators and uh, the sliders. Are those a good thing to have on your website or a bad thing? No, no, they're not. Do you know why? Yes. Okay. Psychology. What <laughs> uh, well, the reason is because our, our brains kind of just default now. We've seen them so many times. Our brain defaults to so that's advertising. Uh, why would I want to see advertising? I'm not going to read it. I'm not going to look at it. I'm not going to click those links. Um, and pretty much the average consumer now doesn't take the time to stay on the page and actually look at that. They're scrolling down through the page to find what they're looking for. Yeah, absolutely. So, so if you do have a slider, we highly recommend that you don't use a slider and you just find a good quality photo um, with a really enticing statement. So yep. we call this the hero era er, area. Mm -hmm. um, so you want a good quality picture, but also more importantly, you want a solid one to two sentences that draws people in. So I feel like a broken record, but you have three seconds to capture my attention and I need to know um, who you are, what you do, um, how you can solve my problem and who you work with and what do you want me to do next? So let's talk about um, those, those elements. So we know that you're wealth advisors. Okay. So that's good. It's in your logo. Um, but custom solutions, solid results, a shared focus on this seems like a little bit uh, industry speak. It doesn't mm -hmm. really create an emotion. It doesn't really draw me in and it, and it doesn't, address a problem I might have. Maybe I'm looking for um, retirement help or I'm looking for uh, a tax accountant, you know, because mine is, is not doing a good job or something that is gonna resonate with me. And then tell me who you work with. Do you work with small, large businesses? Do you work, you know, what do you work just locally? Do you work in the United States? And then what do you want me to do? So contact us is fine but it's not compelling enough. Uh, right. People want to, they want, if they decide that they want to work with you, you need to give them some options. You can have live chat, right? Which is immediate results. You can have a phone number, which some, you know, some small businesses don't want their phone number on there. But if you are okay with that, I would highly recommend you put it up here in the corner. Um, but more importantly, uh, I think the most effective one is to schedule a uh, consult actually yeah. have a calendar like on our website, right, Eric, mm -hmm. um, to schedule because people don't want to wait. No one wants to fill out an email form and wait for exactly. it, right? Because it goes into filters and spam. Mm -hmm. They want an immediate result. So they want to like schedule an appointment. Um, what do you think of maybe having like, I love, let's give them kudos for doing a video first of all. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I think, let me, click on it what we're really about is providing sound strategic fiduciary level of yeah so it's a professionally produced video exactly. so kudos to them to do that um 
Fun that fact. video, like just by itself, is so far in advance of the website. Yeah. It's like, wow, just take away the website and leave the video there, and you've got right? an awesome website. It's perfect. Yeah. So I almost think, you know, get rid of this and just, you know, open this whole area up and and feature feature the the video yeah. and have some text overlay. Of yeah. And let me hop back on the call to action. I think you said something really insightful. Okay. Um, when you were mentioning the call to action, you said live chat. I know a lot of small businesses are like, oh my gosh, live chat. I can never handle that because there's so many people coming to my website. Right. Who's going to take care of that? Um, I know that they have a secretary and I know the secretary is very active. And then you can also set a lot of settings in live chat now that would uh, create like a lunchtime or create an, a, an away message. But, or if she's busy, you know, it would just go, go to an automated message. But live chat is so powerful. It is so amazing. People love to use it. And it really creates just that instant connection with your website because people want that gratification. They don't want to pick up the phone. They don't want to call you. They want to either schedule right away or they want to ask their question. Live chat exactly. is such a huge uh, resource for small businesses that is so underutilized. And most live chat software is not expensive. And if you're not online live, you just ask for your email and you can follow up. So you are exactly. getting leads that may have gone to your competitors um, while they were waiting to contact you. And also you can create uh, like a wiki or an FAQ or, um, you know, where they can ask that you can create a bot where if they ask certain questions, it'll serve up the mm -hmm. answer. Um, again, people want immediate results. They want answers. So all good advice. So let's talk about the, the copy right here. Um, I know that I talked about this stuff here and you do point out that you do, you work in Bellevue, Washington. Um, we provide, it's really hard to read, um, on the site. It needs to be, I think a little bit, the font needs to be a little bigger. Um, and it feels like it's squished in here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's and it's not as much of a mission statement as it is just to kind of, oh, this is a little aside if you happen to read it. Yeah, um, I would definitely recommend you know, a minimum of 14 to 16 point because, you know, you just want to engage people. And also on your mobile website, that needs to scale appropriately to uh, to be readable on mobile as well. Yeah. And then this affects search engine optimization as well. So if you have this little amount of text, you don't want a lot of text, but you want enough um, quality copy on your home page that allows Google to index the website and go, oh, we clearly know what you do, how you solve pe people's problems, and the keywords are in there. So if your keywords are tax accountant Bellevue, mm -hmm. um, it needs to be in here. Um, so that helps you get found in search engines. Let's talk about, uh, I like how they list the three key uh, capabilities here, but I, I'm not liking the buttons. You want to talk about that, Eric? Yeah, I mean, it's just a symptom of the website being from 2010, which is um, Web 2.0. Uh, it's very rounded, a lot of like bevels and a lot of gradients. And yeah. we just don't see that in web design anymore. It's not on, not on trend. Um, if anything, we see a lot more clean design and it can have effects. Like we love to see animations in our design to mm -hmm. actually show, okay, you're you're navigating a menu, but these bubbles and things. Uh, think of think of like the original iPhone, uh, and I if if I remember, it was like 2006 was the original iPhone when that came out, and that's like you know you had all these glossy bevels and everything was like really rounded, and people yeah. freaked out a little bit when Apple went away from that. But if you want to do anything, think about Apple. If they're doing something, it's probably on trend because everybody has an iPhone. Yeah, exactly. And let's talk about trends a little bit. Everyone worries about, oh my gosh, if I follow a trend, it's going to be outdated the next year. And mm -hmm. I like to look at a website as a never ending project. I know clients don't like that, but it is right. never actually finished. It you, you should be constantly making tweaks to it to improve it. Because in the end, when someone comes to your website and they don't know anything about you, first impressions are enormous and people consumers are super smart these days. They've always been smart, but even more now they just have so much information of what is quality. Right. And, yeah. and subconsciously, if you're looking at something that you know, instinctively is outdated, 
immediately your trust level goes down. You say, well, if they're not exactly. keeping on cutting edge, well then how are they gonna keep my business cutting edge? Do they, you know, have they kept their certificates up? You know, are they still, you know, getting getting the best of the best um, is what I think about. And then let's talk about the actual word more. Um, that's, it indicates that, you know, if you click on it, you're gonna go to, well, let's just go to another page. Um, it's, let's see, okay, so investment advisory. So yeah, it's clear that, um, you're going to go to another page, but it doesn't really compel me to go to that page, right? right? Like, give me a little nugget of of what yeah, I can. Yeah, what's the what's yeah. the actual impetus for going to that page? I don't want to just read more text. I want right. to know what's going on or what's kind of being offered to me. Um, you know, learn more is a fairly standard call to action, but it's not compelling whatsoever. Yeah. Um, so integrity is the centerpiece of our investment advisory. And this is again starting with about Moser and not about me. Like I want to know mm -hmm. immediately. And a good way to do this is to start with questions. Like, do you, are you looking for investment advice? Um, blah blah blah. You know, ask with questions, and then here's mm -hmm. here's how we um, we take care of that. Uh, Just even at, using the word "you" is mm -hmm. so important in marketing. I think in videos, especially, we see um, if the word you is used in the first sentence, uh, viewership retains by 50%. If it's used twice in the uh, first and second sentence, it's increased by 75%. Um, wow. So those, just just addressing, isn't that crazy? Yeah, just addressing the uh, audience who's actually reading this, you know, getting inside their mind is gonna be something that's really helpful when you're writing that copy. Um, and you know, uh, CPAs are not writers like that might this might be just client written copy and yeah. maybe they just need a professional copywriter to actually really suss out okay what's what's going on here and uh, you know what are we trying to communicate and uh, it and I've heard you know with insurance companies and by uh, you know financial they're all like well we we're just not sexy like we're our industry is not sexy and I'm like you don't have to be sexy but you have to be uh, a relevant and relevant yeah. and, and and attract people uh you know it's it's either fear it's either desire or fear right so you're either mm -hmm. scaring them into using you not aggressively or right but they're they see their problems in your copy or they desire yeah. what you're giving them which is you know saving time you know saving uh money whatever that might be so as far as making it you know intriguing to the client you're leaving money on the table if you're not addressing yeah. your client that way can we also um, talk about the navigation um just hover over that top navigation so there are so many options in the navigation as well uh going yeah. over solutions going over about us um a lot of these pages are are just really repetitive and uh could be merged into better pages for example on that about us tab you'll notice that the um, our team, our mission, our history, like those are things that could all be merged together. Our team and our mission and our history should all be on the about page. Yeah. Yeah, they can definitely be um, together. Um, and then on the, I, I like the pictures, I like that. Um, maybe a group shot would be helpful to, to show community. Obviously during COVID, that's not really a good idea, but um, and then having a video, like maybe having a video of uh, some of your team members talking about, you know, why you work for Moser and why you've been there for so long. Um, it really helps with recruitment as well for employing others. Um, I do like the res. Well, I can't really tell what the difference is. So let's check it out on articles. Um, Okay, you really have to drill down here, but that's a lot of clicks just to get to articles. I would expect articles to go directly to a top level blog page. Um, yeah. where you're kind of viewing those. Click. I think you lose um, for every every time you have to click a button to drill down, I think you lose like 30% of viewers. It's a big number. Yeah. Um, but I will say kudos to them for adding this information because this is the stuff that gets indexed again by Google and I know keep repeating it, but unless you are doing what, you know, the minimal required 
stuff that Google puts out, then you're just invisible online and you're just, you know, do, getting business by referrals and not getting any, mm -hmm. any lead generation. Um, your website should be working for you. And one of the ways is to post articles, blogs, you know, we do one every week. Um, and I don't see any cat. Well, these are, I guess, considered categories, uh, business taxes. Yeah, I really like this. I just think it needs to be, it needs to have more of a strategy. Yeah. It. And video. I mean, this would be great. They could grab their iPhone and just kind of start a little video, 45 seconds to a minute, um, giving people an update on what they need to know about home office deductions if things have changed. Uh, this is a great time of year to do that, right? Yeah, yeah, and this is this is perfect, especially I'm thinking with the, with the articles, um, just having a little bit more, you know, visually appealing way to view them as well. So, you know, people's attention spans are so short. I don't know if they're going to look at that menu and see like all the drop downs and be like, oh, there's the article I was looking for. But they might look on a blog page and engage that way. Um, and one more thing I noticed is that uh, they they don't have a social media presence whatsoever. So. <laughs> They are thankfully on uh, Google listings. They're on there, um, but that's pretty much their only point of contact for social. Yeah, and uh, Kim uh, is on the chat, and she just reminded me of the biggest thing that I noticed when I came to the site was they're wealth advisors, but they're not looking high end. They they just yeah. don't look high end. So um, just updating their branding and their images and everything would, would go a long way to instill confidence, you know, and people that are going to, this is, this is your money. It's very personal. Um, let's see here. And then Michelle from Moser is on the line. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Ariel. Nice to see you. Uh, okay. So let's go back to the homepage because there's some other things I wanted to, to talk about. So let's say I'm a prospective, client customer and I come here and I'm like okay these are the things that I need um, you know I don't really want to contact them I don't want to wait I want to talk to someone well there's no there's no phone number unless wait let's go to the contact see if they have a phone number. okay they do have phone numbers but again uh, a quick tweak would be to add it to the upper right hand yep. corner, right that's um, yeah and that's just naturally where people tend to look for a phone number yeah and then I might go and read some articles uh, I also wanted to, to talk about, you know, putting content on your website, not only is it helping search, but it positions you as the authority. And, and you might want to talk a little bit about that, Eric. Yeah, I mean, um, one of the best marketing tactics that you can have is uh, positioning yourself as an authority who's giving away free content that mm -hmm. uh, people can actually utilize. Um, I, there's a name for that. I think it's the generosity. Model but you're just giving people um, things that are in, uh, so valuable to them. And that yep. really allows them to view you as an authority, view you as somebody who's generous, who's not just out to get your money, but somebody that you'd actually like to work with as well. Um, those are gonna be really key uh, talking points for pulling in your articles with your content writer. Hey, how can we give away stuff that's actually really valuable, not just for SEO, not just uh, because we want to have another article on the site, but things that people are actually going to utilize and uh, you know remember our site for. Yeah, it looks like they're keeping up with their newsletter. So kudos for that. Um, I just clicked on newsletter. Let's see, uh, October. So they are doing some content, which is great. Um, it's just a little buried. And then uh, this is what I wanted to talk about next. So how many of us, <laughs> on this uh, this live stream, want yet another email uh, subscription in their inbox? <laughs> no one, no uh, one is waking up in the morning and going, uh, "I want to get more email in my inbox." So, uh, our recommendation is to not call it a newsletter, to call it something else, like um, and and get rid of the word subscribe. Something that's more compelling is sign up for only the best uh, tax advice tips or mm -hmm. sign up to join. Let's say you have a thousand people on your email list, a thousand people who get cutting edge advice every week or something like that. It's yeah. more compelling, right? 
Yeah, or offer them, you know, the top 10 tips for uh, doing your taxes this season. Um, five reasons why you should uh, pick a, a local financial advisor. Yeah. Um, you know, why would they go with you rather than with, uh, you know, another big tax brand? Um, so there's definitely things that are a lot more attra- attractive than subscribe to our email newsletter. That's that's just very, uh, you know, stale. Yeah. And and consider how many people are coming to your website and they, they come to your website and they're never returning. Right. So you've lost that lead. So you need some way to capture their email by giving them value. So that could be signing up for the tips or like Eric said, um, having a lead magnet, which is mm-hmm. essentially, you know, what you said, the top 10 tips or a download, which you can change as often as you like. I mean, it's not that hard to change those up. But think about seasons like right now. Do you, you know what kind of tax advice can you give? Um, and, and just give them like a white paper or top 10 checklist. People love checklists. Uh, and then they're giving you the permission to market and to send more emails out to what we call nurture the relationship. So it's kind of like your first date, right? It's like, okay, I'm gonna give you this checklist and it's really cool. Um, and then in order to go on the second date, I'm gonna send you another email in a couple days and I'm gonna add more value to that. And so. Mm-hmm. You're, you're getting to know me, I'm staying top of mind. Um, and then finally, you know, after maybe four or five emails, I already have it instilled in my brain that, you know, you obviously know what you're talking about. And then I'm gonna use your services. Yeah, especially I think um, on the uh, lead magnet concept, that's something that, um, you know, just a, a simple checklist that's written out in a document converted to a PDF, um, that's perfectly acceptable. And then, you know, for something that's a little bit more advanced, you could even do a video series, you know, sign up for our, our video series on, uh, you know, tax preparation, uh, secrets to save you dollars. Um, something that's really engaging and a longer form content that they can be looking forward every day okay, for the next 10 days, I'm going to get a new video that has a new, uh, you know, tax secret in it. Videos, I think, are especially powerful. We're seeing just so much more conversion on videos than we do text. We're seeing it, you know, better than anything uh, than anybody's doing. The videos are just, you know, super, super powerful. Uh, The other thing I see that's missing is uh, customer stories, testimonials, Mm -hmm. client reviews. Uh, Again, uh, this is an indicator to Google that you are a legit business and that um, people actually like working with you and they're having a good experience. And there's so many ways to do that, right? Uh, typically, you know, you would have back in the day, you'd have a solid page of testimonials, and that was kind of the way that we would do it. Not so much anymore. Now, our recommendation is if you have written testimonials to kind of sprinkle them throughout the site, yeah. right? Um, and, and if you can have a photo to go with it, it converts better. Um, but we understand this is financial, so it's a a little tricky, but you don't have to use their names. You don't have to use their last names or photo or anything. Um, but just having some, you know, even a a testimonial video, that would be super powerful, Mm -hmm. you know, from a long-term client. Yeah. And I know like uh, every small business has that favorite client that is their ideal client if they've worked well with them. Um, I remember one of my first clients that I got a really good recommendation from. uh, She said, Eric, you're the first person that actually came into my business and cared about what I was doing in the past 30 years. I was like, wow. Okay. Number one, I'm really sorry that like nobody else has ever helped you to the extent that you needed it. But you know, that Testimony was so powerful. That's what I used to market myself for the next five years because it, it just reached out to my target clients. So I'm sure Moser has a client that they work really well with that would provide them just one testimonial. And that's all you need for just kind of starting that ball rolling and getting people thinking, oh, wow, okay, they're helping somebody else. They could help me. Yeah. And and just the more I dig down into their site, they have so much content, which is good. Mm-hmm. It just needs to be reorganized and to repurposed uh, across social media. How's the site looking for? How's the site looking for like speed and? Uh, I just ask you that. that. For some reason, um, uh, GT Metrics wasn't working for me. So if you want to run a quick, okay. 
uh, I'm not sure if I can, you can share your screen, but if you want to put it in Slack, yeah. the link, you can pull it up. So I've got uh, it. I've got it pulled up here. Let me try to share my screen. Okay. Let me unshare mine. Let's see if this works. Okay. Can you see it? Mm, nope. <laughs> nope. Okay. Uh, it's sharing a window. There we go. Share screen. Here we go. Okay. Nope. How's that? Still can't see it. Let's see. Mm -hmm -hmm. That's so weird. Hold on. Oh, I have to add it. Sorry. Ah, there we go. I have the controls. Oh, okay. So Okay, yeah, this metrics. This is one of our favorite tools for testing websites and seeing how they're performing. Um, and what you'll notice right away is that uh, the score is a D score on both the page speed score and the Y slow score. And, um, and why, the, is that why is that important to have a, a fast site? Yeah, uh, because people will navigate away from your site. You'll drop off if your site's too slow. Yeah. Um, and this is measuring, I mean, the full fully loaded time is 4.6 seconds. And this can vary um, depending on kind of where you're at and your internet speeds and such. But um, they're try trying to test kind of the best location for the website um, at peak, peak conditions. Um, so I'm not extremely concerned about the load time. The request a little bit high, the load time. It, honestly, if it's below five seconds, I'd be happy with that. But um, what I would see is like not all the images are optimized. We're seeing a lot of unoptimized images. There's and no that, browser. To, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. I'm I'm trying to. Uh, oh, I should I should explain what an optimized image is. That yeah. that makes sense too. Um, so basically, when you upload the image to your website, that image is going to be um, unoptimized essentially. It's going to be um, a bigger file size. It's going to it's going to just be from your computer to the web. So what a lot of web designers will do is they'll optimize that image after the fact to shrink the file size. Uh, it'll still look the same, but it'll it'll um, just remove some of those un that unnecessary data to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, so you can see uh, in a lot of these images here, they're just they're just displaying an unoptimized file. Yeah, um, and that's another pretty term. good to care with a plugin, right? Yeah, usually that's something that we will just install a plugin and we'll we'll optimize all the images on the website at the same time in a bulk amount so that uh, you know we take care of it once and for all, and then we'll leave that plugin installed so when any new images are uploaded, they are automatically optimized as well. So it's usually a really simple step that can increase your score significantly. Yeah, and um, besides. Yeah. Being mobile ready, it's probably the second most important signal to Google that you are a quality site is how yeah. fast it loads. Because if it's if it's loading slowly, they're not even going to give serve you up in the search result. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the reasons why this site is actually loading uh, sub five seconds, and it's still not getting a great score, but it's loading sub five seconds because it's an ancient site. It's built on uh, very basic coding. Mm -hmm. um, so generally we would see if this was like a purely JavaScript website, um, it would probably be a lot higher loading times, but it would also be very inaccessible to uh, Google for uh, actually checking the website and making sure that it's up to date. Um, but that kind of brings me to the leveraging your browser caching. Um, right now, the browser caching is going, uh, it's, it's not being utilized whatsoever on the website. And browser caching is where um, the website tells, the, tells your computer essentially store a little bit of that data yeah. about the website in your browser. So uh, save the pictures, save everything that's common so that when they load the next page, it loads instantaneously instead of having to reload all that content from the server. Yeah, um, so caching it. Yeah. Um, so Michelle uh, pointed out, and this is a great point, Michelle, that yeah. it's really hard for investment firms because they're limited by the CEC, uh, SCE, SEC uh, yeah. for testimonials. But uh, there are other ways around that to highlight customer stories. You can make them very general. Um, you can, um, you know, just it. Call them customer stories. They're they're just without the customer's name. You know, we worked with this couple, and you're painting a picture of their story. Yeah, exactly. and 
and, and what you did, you know, how did you found the holes and how you helped them? Um, you can make it really general. Essentially, the bottom line is, as a prospect, I want to see my problems in examples that you're showing me of how you help people, right? I want to self-identify that you guys are not just another choice, but you are the choice to help me with my problems, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to, we're going to wrap up now and thanks for viewing you guys. Let me stop uh, sharing. No, I'm not sharing. Okay. All right. Well, this has been your website, uh, Smackdown. Again, we do this once a month. Thanks, Eric, for joining me. It was fun. So glad to be here. If you guys are interested in having your website or you know a website that needs a Smackdown or a gentle review, go ahead and send that to Kia or Eric, E-R-I-C, at fingerprintmarketing.com, and we'll feature you next month. Have a great Halloween. Bye, you guys. Take care. Bye.